Hi, welcome to Dr. Pat TV. In this section, we're looking at average rate of change. Uh, from a graph perspective, it's the slopes over an interval. And so to kind of get this idea across, or just to kind of stimulate it, I actually want to use an example of students falling asleep during class. Yes, that uncommon experience for students. Yeah, right. Okay, so what I've got here is a situation where students are complaining about their professor. They're going to the dean, telling the professor's terrible, puts them to sleep, all that good stuff. And in order to support themselves, they actually gather data and graphed the percentage of students who are falling asleep during the 50-minute class period. And so as this graph goes up, that's bad because that means more students are falling asleep. As this graph goes down, less students are falling asleep and some are actually waking back up. So that's kind of the interpretation of this graph. And so what we want to know is how does the professor defend himself? So now the, the dean's going Professor, what's going on here? And the professor's going to try and come up with some way to say, hey, it's not so bad. And we can actually do that with math. So what graphically is looking like a bad situation, maybe the professor can pull something out of the hat. Now, one of the things to do is look at something called the overall rate of change. Um, and so that's what we're looking at here. And the professor can say, wait a minute, it's not so bad because over the whole class period, from time zero to time 50, students were falling asleep at a rate of only 0.3 percentage per minute. So that rate of change. And so what we're looking at is a rate of change, how fast people are falling asleep in this case per minute. And it's not so bad. Okay. And what we're looking at is rates of change is equal to slope. So how did I get this 0.3% per minute? Um, I was looking at rates and that's slope on the graph. So if rates are slopes, then basically we want to make sure that we understand how to calculate that, that formula. So now if I'm looking at the overall rate of change, a special rate of change because it starts from time zero and it goes to any time. It doesn't have to go to the end of the time. It can be at any time. And to do that calculation, you may remember change of y's over change of x's. <coughs> so uh, I'm looking at the typical slope formula. And because I'm starting at time 0, I'm looking at um, uh, f of 0 and 0 on the bottom. And because you got x minus 0 there on the bottom there, we can just kind of rewrite that as just plain old x downstairs. And so this is our uh, formula for calculating overall rate of change. It's basically the slope formula with the special point times zero. And in a special case, you actually get it as f of x over x. And when we do that is because the y-intercept is zero. So whenever time you have a graph going the, through the, uh, the intercept uh, at zero, doing the crocs uh, at zero, zero, then basically we get the special case of the overall rate of change as the y value over x. Okay, so now how is this used in the example that I showed? Well, I was looking for the overall rate of change from time 0 to time 50, and what we get is the slope of this line right here. So going from time 0 to time 50, that shows the slope. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, that's a terrible slope to use because from time 0 to time 50, that incorporates this down line. So using this overall rate of change, that's a bad one. So you might be telling the professor, you're wrong. You're just manipulating things. Because if you look at from time 0 to time 40, that overall rate of change, that's a huge one. And so you might be saying to the professor, no, you can't use that. And so then the professor might say something differently. So here's, our, uh, here's where I got the 0.3%. Uh, just doing that calculation, I went from 0 to 15, changing the y values over a 50-minute period. But now we're saying, hey, wait a minute, that's a bad one to use. Then the professor comes back with this idea. Well, um, if we want to look at the overall rate of change and you won't let me use it from 0 to 50, let's analyze that. So basically, the professor can say, look what's happening. The slope is actually getting smaller. So here is our first example from 0 to 10 is our time frame. And what we have is we have a nice slope there. But then if I go 0 to 15, the slope there is less steep. It's a less value. So going from 10 to 15, this overall rate of change actually gets smaller because the slope is smaller. The steepness of that 
those lines is less. And then it's getting less steep if we go from 0 to 20. And that means the overall rate of change is uh, getting smaller. And there we go, smaller again, smaller again. And sm oh, that's the first time it actually went back up. And then smaller again. So what I'm looking at here is an example of uh, the overall rates of change are getting smaller because these, these slopes, uh, these lines are getting less steep. So the professor comes back and says, wait a minute, things are actually improving because people are falling asleep at a less rate. The rate of, of students falling asleep is actually getting smaller. So I'm actually doing things. So that's an argument there that the professor could use. All right. Another argument is that the professor could use a combination of rates. So let's kind of the uh, professor can say, you know, over the first 10 minutes when I have no control over the students because they're coming in sleepy and stuff like that. And they're just falling asleep because that's where they're at. Um, th the overall rate of change is 1.5. But if you go from time 10 to time 50, when actually I have influence over the students, I have an impact over them, you'll see that the average rate of change of students falling asleep is zero. So it's bad at the beginning, not my control. They're coming in that way. But for the rest of the class period, it's good. You might be thinking, wait a minute, what? Where did I get this zero percent rate per minute, this rate of zero? Well, let's take a look at how we can manipulate these graphs. And so we're back at the graph. And so what I'm looking at it here is from 0 to 10, we have that overall rate of change. OK, starting from 0 going to 10. That's the overall. And then the average rate of change can be between two points, doesn't matter where. And I'm going from 10 to 50. And notice, that gives me a nice horizontal line. So going from 0 to 10 and then 10 to 50, I've got a nice horizontal line which represents no change. So the professor is basically using some uh, calculations of rates of change and indicating like, hey, wait a minute, no problem here because for the last 40 minutes, I've got nobody extra falling asleep because the rate of change is zero. Now, clearly we can see this graph and we can go, that can't be just doesn't make sense for that. We've got this whole graph here going up. We clearly see this going up, but then it comes back down the last five, six minutes. And the only reason this is going down the last five, six or minutes is people are packing up, getting ready to go, and people are waking up so that they can go. It's no impact of the professor. And so what we're looking at here is when we're doing overall rates of change and average rates of changes, what we have to be careful about is when we analyze these things, we lose information in between time. This average rate of change that we're looking here at time 10 and time 50 is only about the period between time 10 using that data point and the data point at time 50. It doesn't incorporate any other data point in between. So that's why we got to be careful. Another example that we can use that to actually get into the, the real application of this whole rates of change is when we're looking at stock market, the Dow Jones. Okay, so I've got this, this, this situation here where I'm looking at the Dow Jones over a period of time. Um, and I'm looking from like 96 to, um, to 09. And we all know that in 2008, it was a bad year. And so what we have here is a case where, hey, somebody can say, Overall, the Dow Jones actually increased $134 per year from this time period. So you could say that, hey, if I invested early on, then I'm actually making money. But that would be a bad example because clearly we can see that the stock market was going up, well, it came back down, and went up again. So there was a large increase and then a very steep decrease kind of just like my example of the, uh, the student sleeping so there was a lot of stuff happening in between that uh, a good investor could have taken advantage or avoided and actually got a better return than 134 dollars per year so what i'm what i want to bring this uh to your example is when we do rates of change overall or average rates of change we have to be careful because what happens it clears out the ups and downs and it only incorporates two data points when you make the uh, rates of change so always be leery when people are asking you for your money and they're using rates of change because it's uh, eliminating it's kind of ignoring a lot of things that happens in between okay so this is part one for the uh, section on average rates of change talk to you later